Glamorous, trend-setting and cool are all words that could well be used to describe me, but I'm actually talking about the airline that I'm flying with today. I'm at London's Heathrow Airport, about to hop on board my first flight with Virgin Atlantic to New York. Now, I've heard some really great things about Virgin Atlantic, so I'm looking forward to seeing what it's like in economy for myself. And did I mention this flight's on board the A350 as well? Welcome to Blake Edgington Airborne. Let's get going. There are a number of major airlines that use Terminal 3 at London Heathrow, but none make their presence known quite as well as Virgin. They really shout about it. Virgin take their branding very seriously, and there's no mistaking where to go at check-in. If you have luggage, there are plenty of staff around to point you in the right direction, but as I was travelling light, I used the self-service machines to print a boarding pass, and then made my way straight upstairs to departures. After making my way through security and the standard maze of a duty-free shop, I reached the main departures area. And if you have money burning a hole in your pocket, you're well catered for here in Terminal 3 with a range of shops available. You could choose from a wide selection of products including mementos of your visit to London, right through to premium items from high-end brands. There's also a good selection of places to grab some food before takeoff, and if like me you need to charge your devices while waiting to fly, power is available in the seating areas. As impressive as the shops and restaurants in Terminal 3 are, I'm more interested in nerding out when visiting Heathrow. There aren't many views of the aircraft from the central shopping area, but after a little walking around, I found exactly what I was looking for. So that's my first experience through Terminal 3 here at Heathrow. It's not one that's going to be one of my favourites unfortunately, but there is still plenty to do if you have a couple of hours to kill before your flight. Speaking of which, they have now called my flight, let's head to New York on the A350. Virgin Atlantic was formed in 1984, first flying between London and New York with the aim to make flying fun, friendly and most importantly more affordable than established legacy carriers such as longtime rival British Airways. Fast forward to 2019 and Virgin carries over 5 million passengers to around 25 destinations across the globe. The airline is currently modernising its wide-body fleet by replacing its A340 and Boeing 747 jets with newer aircraft such as the 787 Dreamliner and of course the Airbus A350. We'll look at the A350 experience shortly, but first, does Virgin still offer affordable long-haul fares? They do indeed. A quick search on the airline's website offers a return trip from London to New York for as little as £261, which is great value. This is based on an economy light booking with hand luggage only, but you can choose a higher fare class for more benefits and flexibility. I myself booked an economy light fare, which still includes all of the onboard benefits, including meals. 
Soon after takeoff, the hard-working Virgin cabin crew began service, which started with a choice of drink accompanied by a bag of pretzels. Now, while a full-size can would have been nice, refills were always available, and I did appreciate the purple glass. Virgin really don't miss a trick with branding. Also handed out around the same time as the initial drinks were menu cards, which is a really nice touch in economy class. Virgin offer a choice of three main courses, and as I'm not a fan of mushroom or cauliflower, I opted for the macaroni cheese. Having not had anything to eat before departure, I was getting quite hungry at this point. Sadly, when my meal arrived, I was left underwhelmed. The tray itself was tiny, and the, sadly the food wasn't very memorable. Even in economy, I've had better salads than this, which was bland and could have really used some sort of dressing. It's hard to get mac and cheese wrong, and I have to say the pancetta added quite a nice flavour, but I was mostly disappointed by the dessert, which was a tiny chocolate and caramel ganache. It did taste nice, but like the rest of the meal, there simply wasn't much of it. Maybe this is Virgin's way of telling me that I need to lose a little weight. With the meal cleared away, let's take a look around the beautiful Airbus A350, and boy is this thing beautiful. Virgin fit a total of 335 seats on its new flagship aircraft, with the economy cabin seating 235 passengers laid out in a 333 configuration. The A350 is a massive step forward in passenger comfort compared to Virgin's older aircraft, with its wider and taller cabin providing a real feeling of space. The A350 features huge windows which provide plenty of light, and unlike their main competitor BA, Virgin also offer a high definition tail camera so that even passengers in the middle of the cabin could admire the views. While we're on the subject of Virgin vs British Airways, both offer reading lights in a panel above your head, but Virgin also tick the box on the Airbus options list for individual air vents, a big plus in my book and something that BA have decided not to add to their own aircraft. As with many modern aircraft, the A350 offers LED ambient lighting, which according to Airbus is designed to mimic natural sunrise and sunset to help reduce the effects of jet lag. Well, Virgin being Virgin seem to have gone another way with their use of the lights, and for much of my flight the cabin was bathed in a kind of purple glow, which was fun initially, but I have to be honest, by the end of the flight I was desperate for something a little more subtle. Finally, we can't possibly forget one of the most important areas of the aircraft, the toilets, which as far as economy class toilets go were pretty cool with some really nice design choices, and all in all I think it's fair to say that Virgin have done a brilliant job with their A350s. It's been a comfortable flight so far, but now let's take a look at some of the key features of the seat and the entertainment system on board this Virgin A350. On a long haul flight in economy, the seat really can make or break your experience, especially for taller passengers, and thankfully the seat offered by Virgin is a good one. As always, we'll work from top to bottom, and the first thing you'll notice is the large entertainment screen, which we'll look at soon, but it's worth pointing out the headphone jack and the first of two USB ports, the second of which is found a little further down to keep your devices fully charged. Underneath the screen is a small storage area, which for me would be a good place for Virgin to store the in-flight magazines, as the section at the bottom is not enclosed, meaning it's not really the best place to keep your phone, for example. Like many newer aircraft, the tray table can be used in a couple of ways. Folded in half, it provides enough room for a drink, and when fully opened up, there's ample space for a laptop or to enjoy your in-flight meal. Some adjustment is available if you need to bring your food that little bit closer. Your main storage area is found at the bottom of the seat and offers lots of room for the in-flight literature or to keep your essential items close by. Legroom is key on a long haul flight and you can see that even with the seat in front of me reclined I had a little room for my knees and this was a perfectly comfortable seat for this flight to New York. Virgin also offer a fully adjustable headrest which is a very useful feature and here's a better look at the seat on the ground but what do you think of the design? Let me know in the comments. As wonderful as the views outside are, especially with that brilliant tail camera, long haul flying even for me can have its dull moments, so in-flight entertainment is a great way to pass the time. Virgin Atlantic system on the A350 Vera offers a high quality large screen which I found to be easy to use and very responsive. You can even use your phone as a controller for the system. I had a go and yes it did work, but it felt like a bit of a gimmick and I preferred to use the touchscreen. The in-flight entertainment includes a range of TV shows and documentaries. You're also able to watch several episodes of your favourite programme. 
There is included a separate section where you'll find children's content. If music is more your thing, then Virgin offer a good selection of artists to choose from, although they did get the album titles mixed up on the Foo Fighters choices. I myself tend to watch movies when flying long haul, and while Virgin do offer a decent selection, it's by no means the most extensive that I've ever seen. I was however very pleased that with this flight taking place in December, one of my favourite Christmas films of all time was available. To enjoy the content available on Vera, Virgin provide headphones to all passengers. I was pleased that they weren't the cheap earbuds that you'll find on some airlines, but that aside the sound quality wasn't the best and I was grateful that I brought my own. As we've just looked at entertainment and technology on board the Virgin A350, it's also worth pointing out that Wi-Fi is available on board. The Wi-Fi was easy to connect to and Virgin offer three packages depending on your requirements with the most expensive max package valid for the full flight. This means that even while cruising above the Atlantic Ocean, you can keep up to date with my latest social media posts where I'll share channel news and updates on my travels on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. With our flight nearing New York, it was time for the final food service of the trip and after my underwhelming meal earlier on, I was eager for a bite to eat. Virgin have teamed up with the French master patissier Eric Lanlard who has created a mile high tea service. I really liked the presentation box that was handed out by the crew and the sandwich itself was absolutely delicious but, like my earlier meal, it was very small. Of course this wouldn't be an afternoon tea without a scone served with clotted cream, although sadly the advertised jam was nowhere to be seen with my food. And that's it, we're now making our final approach into JFK. Make sure to stick around to the end of the video for my final thoughts as always. It's a little bit dark outside, not sure how much we'll see. Enjoy the landing. So welcome to New York, that's it, that's my flight with Virgin Atlantic on the A350 and this of course is where I'll share with you my final thoughts on today's trip. Starting off at Heathrow Terminal 3, it's by no means my favourite terminal at Heathrow. It's not terrible by any means but there are some long walks to the gates and although there are a good selection of shops and restaurants I did find it also quite congested in the departure area so that's something to consider. My main issue today though at Heathrow was the security experience. It took quite a while to get through, but my biggest problem was the fact that I actually overheard a member of staff making negative comments about some of the passengers, which really wasn't great to hear. But I wasn't gonna let that bring me down because of course my main objective today was to try out Virgin Atlantic for the first time on this channel, and it didn't disappoint overall. Starting off with the aircraft, the A350, it's a wonderful machine. It's got some fantastic modern touches to add to the passenger experience, such as those really, really large windows, which I really like. Things like the toilet design was really smart. You've got the LED mood lighting in the cabin, and of course that tail camera, well, it should be on every aircraft as far as I'm concerned. It's phenomenal. The cabin crew as well, I'd read a lot about them, how good Virgin crew were, and they didn't disappoint either. They were so friendly from the moment we boarded until the moment we disembarked, really engaging. Maybe some people might find them a little bit over familiar or a little bit too relaxed, but it wasn't bad at all, it's just the way they are. It adds that whole warm atmosphere you have on board the aircraft. And they were also very, very hard working, not only in the main services, but they were constantly up and down the cabin, offering top ups of drinks, tea, coffee, water, even orange squash, which I really like. So a massive thumbs up to the cabin crew.
And as we're speaking of crew, I should mention one thing that I was a bit surprised about today. I may have missed it, but I personally don't remember hearing from the flight deck until we were approaching New York, about seven hours into the flight, which was quite surprising. I guess they were very, very busy, but I would have expected to hear from them on the ground perhaps, and I was on board the aircraft early, it just didn't happen. Then we come to the seat. Now the seat itself today, well, it was really comfortable. I will say that first of all. Decent amount of padding and the legroom wasn't bad. Certainly not the best I've had in a long haul flight this year, but not terrible either. What I will say about the seat though, is I personally found the color choices of the seat to be a little bit dark. It really did make it feel a bit claustrophobic really around the seat air because of the dark browns and reds they've chosen. Just my opinion. Do let me know what you think in the comments. Another thing about today's flight though and the seat itself was the in-flight entertainment system. Now first of all it was really really responsive and again it had features like that tail camera and a map that you could adjust and have a look around but the overall amount of entertainment fitted to it I didn't find that impressive. I thought there'd be a much greater selection on board and there was no search function either so that's something to consider. I have been spoilt on some flights I've had this year but it was a little bit lacking for me and if I flew Virgin more often I could see myself working through it pretty quickly. And then we come to the meal service. Now the food on board today's flight for me was the biggest letdown. Number one is the fact that the portion sizes in my opinion weren't great. Now I'm a big guy, I like my food, but it was really disappointing the amount of food that we were given in the main meal service and the quality of it for me wasn't that good either. Things did improve a little bit when you got to the afternoon tea service. It was really nice and tasty, but again there wasn't much to it. So that's something I'd certainly think about when I am flying with Virgin Future, maybe grab a bite to eat before I board. But put that to one side, overall it was a perfectly comfortable flight of Virgin across the Atlantic today. Are they the best transatlantic carrier? Well I can't say personally, I haven't tried all of the other competition yet, but they weren't bad at all. I do look forward to putting them to the test against some others in the future. And if you'd like to see my future flights with Virgin and other carriers, please do make sure to subscribe to this channel by hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell so you never miss a future episode. Also, I always look forward to reading your feedback, good or bad. Do let me know in the comment section what you thought of this video and about your personal experiences with Virgin as well. And if you enjoyed the video, please make sure to hit that thumbs up button. It really does mean a lot to me if I do get some likes. Most of all though, as always, thank you very much for watching and of course, Take care.